Hello and welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts, Lucy Halden and Benjamin Halden. Today we are joined by Sid Grose and you will all know her off Instagram as the girl who makes the gym the friendliest place and the gym community a place where you want to be and you want to join. In this week's episode, we'll be talking about lots of different topics around the psychology of the weight room from failure, the fear of failure, social facilitation theory, and also getting high. In this episode, Sid will allow you to overcome gym anxiety, build confidence, and also teach you how to make friends in the gym. And I think it's such a powerful and important episode, especially if you're listening as a girl who isn't quite sure about stepping foot into the gym or why you should do it. And Sid will do exactly Mm -hmm. that for you. Please make sure before you do dive into the episode to either leave a review on the podcast, like the podcast if you're watching on YouTube or Spotify, but most of all, Tell the people about it. Enjoy the episode. Sid, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. We are going to dive straight in. Go. Is the gym <laughs> an intimidating place? Um, perhaps in your head, yes. Mm. Perhaps for some. Um, but in actuality, no. So it's much more a mental thing than it is mm. in, in itself, yeah. Why do you think, because based around your content and what mm. you do and how you got into it, which we'll go, go into a little bit later, I think a lot of people, and I say more so women, get gym intimidation or they feel they can't go into the gym because it's not a safe space. Did you ever feel that? Because you don't look like you get any sort of intimidation in the gym, like you're very confident in the gym, you're a very yeah. confident person. But I believe a lot of women do think the gym is a, a, sc- a scary place to be. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like perhaps the landscape of gyms has changed definitely since like social media and people able, a, like being able to like share, I don't know, just like a different perspective on things and a different like mindset. <laughs> I, I do get gym intimidation. And I saw you. I, I saw you. I saw you. But yeah, I don't know. I definitely feel gym anxiety at times still. And I think I saw you post about it and I'm like, Lucy, Lucy, yeah. are you joking? Yeah. You're like a queen of like working out, you know? And it's like, it's something that everyone experiences, but it's just kind of learning how to manage it like with anything else. Yeah, I kind of, I, I think for me, it helps like understanding that, well, the way I kind of got around it was like, putting myself out there, putting myself in like uncomfortable situations, but also just understanding that it is something that everyone experiences and you just have to push for it. Um, But yeah, I think the gym is more, yeah, is definitely a safe space. And I think people are, women especially are slowly realizing that. Um, And I would say that's definitely down to like social media helping. I feel like that's had a massive impact. I know for me anyway, if I think about like this on my journey, I was just like looking at social yeah. media just to kind of make me feel better. Cause it's all just like uncharted territory, you know, the gyms, they feel intimidating because it's just all completely foreign. Um, so yeah. What do you think underpins that intimidation? Mm, I don't know. Perhaps I think certainly like, I say like our generation broadly speaking, but like that kind of, age where like I I know I can certainly speak for myself maybe a little bit older and a little bit younger girls will relate but like just kind of growing up the things that you kind of heard and all of those like things that just influence how you're thinking about um spaces like that like I don't know growing up for me the gym was like oh yeah it's like really male dominant and like um I didn't have it all about like I didn't have role models that I could like look up to that I think there are now um yeah I think for, I, I, I was just thinking about this person when I'm on the way up I think even for a lot of people aside from that it's just failing at something mm. is, is a big thing for a lot of people and I was thinking about would a question to both of you would you be scared of failing if you were in an empty gym no and you know what so that has actually just like triggered a thought. So when I decided like, okay, I really want to get into gym. 
I want to give it a go. Something that really scared me was this fear of doing something wrong in front of other people. And I remember so like vividly, um, I went to the gym on actually Christmas day. It was open and that. yeah, I think well, I'm fairly certain it was Christmas day. It may have been Christmas Eve, but it, it was completely empty, which makes me think it was Christmas day. And I went with my brother and it was desolate like there was not a single soul in this gym which is like you know I just go to like mm -hmm. your everyday run-of-the-mill gym it's always busy there's never a time that it is you know and it was so amazing for me up until that point I had only literally ventured into like cardio the cardio machines and I maybe if I was feeling especially like confident I might have gone over to like the cables downstairs only because there was no way in hell I was going to the men's like area yeah. you know the weight section so anyway so it's like Christmas day and I went there with my brother and I just was like frolicking around I was just like enjoying it using it as a playground which is like something that I really like talk about a lot like just see it as like an adult playground and I remember my brother just being like typical brother and just like he got picked up one of those yoga balls and just like looked at me <laughs> across the room but um you know I that was the first time I ever recorded myself and I just like but it was so amazing to to kind of have that time to like play around and that's why I do say to people you know if you are lacking confidence like just there are like things you can do that actually make your life easier whilst you're just like feeling so nervous like go go at a time when you know it's gonna be quieter so after the rush in the morning or like late at night and it just means that you you feel like not that people are looking at you but you feel like you've got less eyes on you and you're just like yeah isn't that a strange thought though because a lot of people are scared of failure, but they're not actually scared of failure. They're scared of what other people, other people will think of them yeah. failing. So failure is not actually the scary thing. No, it's you yeah. giving the power to the people that you think would judge you for failing. Yeah. And I remember being like, so worried about, but okay. And I, I just remember it so vividly. It's like, I would think, okay, but I want, I really want to try and use a barbell. Like I really wanted to use a barbell. I was like, but I don't know how to do it and I'm so the kind of person as well where like I everything I do I give 110 percent and if it's not perfect then it's not worth doing um but yeah so it'd be like I'd walk up to the I'd think like there's no way I can walk up to that barbell or like ask someone like the idea of asking someone would just petrify me and mm. I remember thinking like everyone there I think when you're a newbie at the gym, you think everyone there's an expert. And yeah. now it's so funny because I, you know, being so involved in the space, I just realized like most people have no clue what they're doing, yeah. like no clue. And you know, the people that are the most experienced that you would think would be most likely to judge you are the people that would be so happy to like, if someone asked me, oh, sorry, um, how do I do the rack? I'd be like, girl, let me show you, yeah. like, you know? And it's just, that's why I say it's all in your mind mm -hmm. and, if that offers anyone else any like comfort, then yeah. But it, it honestly is so true because yeah. my, when I had gym anxiety, because I get it when I go to a new gym. Yeah. So if I go to a new gym, I feel really overwhelmed. Not that I don't know where the kit is, that doesn't bother me. No. It's, I feel like I get very stared at because I, I had like the gym environment when I swam, we still did S and C, like I understood the weight room and that was all fine. It was more so when I started doing it at uni, by myself, and this is going back like six years, it was still quite a masculine space, mm -hmm. but I had a lot of muscle. So I was going in and I was, I felt like I was getting stared at because I stuck out like a sore thumb, but it wasn't stares as in like, oh my God, disgusting. It was maybe intrigue or, oh, she's strong. It wasn't, oh my God, what is she doing in the weights room? How dare she? But I thought, they didn't want me there. I thought they hated my presence. Mm. And that was something that I really had to come to terms with because the whole narrative of women can't have muscle, women shouldn't have muscle, it would play in my mind. Mm. And I'd be like, well, it's, tr it's true. Like, oh, oh my God, like I shouldn't be here. And I was the same when that happened. I was like, oh, I'll go on the Stairmaster mm. or I'll, I'll just, I'll slide away. But it does creep back in sometimes. Sometimes, not as, not as much. But why would you not feel like that? Because Why wouldn't I feel what? It, I think like it's normal because if you were to go into any other environment, whether that be like a new job or a new city, wherever it would be, you've had, you've got no evidence that you've ever been there before to back mm. yourself and have confidence. So I think but but even now, sometimes I've got all the evidence to back myself. But you go into a new space I, is what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So like you've got no evidence of being there Your before. Your laptop's dying. Sorry, Cal, Ben's laptop's dying. Just a moment. 
being just, in your switch I was room. literally panicking then thinking um, his laptop's You've got go. no evidence before. It's, uh, do you know what I was trying to compare it to? It was when we mm. went to Steph's Ironman the other day and there was a nudist beach in Spain. I was like, Get how is he just walk, yeah, walking along yeah. like a dinglings out or his dangling out and like but it'd just be the exposure to the situation that would make you Mm. more confident in that position I was like maybe if I did a week naked down there I'd actually probably be alright and it's it's again the exposure and the evidence nah not a day I I think after a day I'd be like oh I would have let me tell you I'd have no (laughs) trouble I don't know if it's as it's, it, weird it's, for us because your willy's a little bit more exposed. But, but Everything's those, hanging. Or yeah. is that, yeah. I feel like for us, it's like... Where it's just like there. We're all... It's, we're it's, in, it's we're all nothing though when you look at nude speech because some people are like super timid and then some people are so proud it's that like they want this. everyone to see as every part. Yeah, yeah. As they should be. But I feel like as well though, touching on that, like what we were saying before, like I think so many people don't... And I was the same. Like you you go through life or you just live out your days and your weeks and your months without really challenging yourself or doing anything that's out your com- outside of your comfort zone and I think the gym space has so much or honestly any kind of exercise really has so much there's so much that's out of your outside of your comfort zone but like that is where the growth comes so I feel like even if you can just like take it step by step and like you know I remember just so, top I feel like the space everyone goes to like when they're nervous is like on the stairmaster just like because they've got enough <laughs> hype to just like yeah I'm going to go there one day, but yeah. not yet. Yeah, yeah, so. Absolutely. When you said before, I wanted to start going to the gym. Mm. Why, what, what, this, I feel like it was quite a sudden, I want to, I want to go to the gym. I want to train. Yeah. Not like you've maybe not always been in fitness and then it was, so yeah. how, how did it? So I always, I always grew up with um, my parents very much encouraging exercising and from like, <clears throat> sorry, um, from the perspective of it being really healthy for your mind, my parents are really mindful with um, mental health and they've always kind of, growing up, I've always had that. So I always knew like, you know, I go to exercise for the friendship and um, for like, I'm a stress head by nature. So just to like de-stress. And then it was when I kind of went to uni, I just completely lost my way with it. Didn't exercise at all. Got like swept up in partying and just kind of living an unhealthy lifestyle. Um, And I was distracted. So it didn't really matter for me. Uh, And then it was just that I, it was like sort of 2021 was a really rough year for me. Had like a lot of life events happen including including <clears throat> including like loss um and then I had like a bout of like depression I had broken up with someone I'd been with for like a massive chunk of like my life um I'd moved back home so I'd had all these big life changes and I just remember thinking like how how am I how am I gonna get myself out of this and you know there'd be days where I just couldn't get out of my bed I had no job because I'd decided like I don't want to continue what I was doing so I was just really I was just like I look back at her then and I'm just like I was such a lost soul um and so I kind of I don't know I think as a last resort I kind of thought back to when my parents would be like oh we'll just go to get your endorphins flowing um so I joined my local gym and I didn't really have I'd lost a lot of my friends that year um so I was quite lonely as well and then um, I just started going and I met, I met, I just met a really good group of guys that just like completely just changed everything for me. And I'd always, I mean, as a separate thing, I'd always like had challenges with, I've always been like a bigger girl in the sense that I've always had like, I've never had the thigh gap or mm. the whatever. And um, they really like championed that in like a non-sexual way and just as a platonic friend like wow you're so strong have you ever considered like embracing that and um I just found so much more than just like you know a space to exercise or whatever it just really like was so transformative to me I found friendship I found like self-love and um just so many things so a way to de-stress and um just a routine more than anything so then I just kind of fell into it completely so I think it did happen quickly but I I needed it and I it found me like at the right time so I think I just kind of rolled with it um so yeah I think that's it comes across like uh, and again probably kudos to your parents as well I think that comes across quite a lot in your content in terms of 
using that environment as like a social space to be and feel good factor and to, to meet people. I think that's a really nice thing to th- see because uh, I don't know why it seems like sometimes that people don't talk anymore or scared to speak to people anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's good to see like conversations that you're having with people online. I even had a, an incident of it like a couple of weeks ago with a guy called Nathan um, where he was in the background of one of my videos, went and spoke to him and like I did like a little transformation thing with him now we've been friends for, like 12 weeks we've got training sessions mm-hmm. in ever since um why do you think people just are struggling to connect with people why do you what do you think creates the barriers for people being even talking in the gym to each other anymore well I feel like it kind of goes to like being an adult and making friends is hard mm-hmm. so I think if you're not used to that and you know you've still got your same friends that you had since school and you know that sort of thing you're probably not used to it however in the gym space and I guess in other ways you know other like forms of Mm -hmm. exercise and running clubs or netball teams all that sort of thing it's very very commonplace like to make friends and it's I think how a lot of adults do actually find a lot of like friendships I think yeah so I would probably think it's just that people are out of practice and they don't know. But um, I was going to touch on my, I think my whole like content and my attitude towards like kind of platforming and showcasing like gym community. I think that came out of, because I only realized the other day when someone repeated it back to me, that I think that came from witnessing and growing up in the cycling community. Um, The cycling community is like, so I used to compete and I come from like a cycling family um, on a velodrome. You know what a velodrome is? Yeah, terrifying. I've yeah. never, I've never no, tried like, it because I'm like, there's no, no brakes. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's like 45 degree angle. Um, oh, so I didn't know really that about cool. you. That's amazing. Hi. Oh, that was cute. You That's some, who, I think, we, I don't just, know. just to let people know, we are in the My Protein yeah. new store and there's people yeah. waving us like, through Honestly, the window. Honestly, my ADHD right now, I'm really <laughs> just like, hold on to There'll the There'll be a few people who do that. Um, yeah, so what was I even saying? Velodrome. Oh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I d- and I didn't realise this. I mean, the whole social media, like, journey I've been on so far, I didn't even realise how much that this had had a profound impact on me until I was doing an interview the other day for a cycling magazine, and they said, oh, so do you think, like, can you tell us about your cycling history? And I'm like, oh, my God, yeah, it's there. Because, um, you know, I, every Saturday or, like, you know at the weekends or in the evenings it'd be like a thing go down see all your teammates go and train there go for drinks and food and just like find friendships and stuff like that so I think I kind of always grew up with that and I remember thinking to myself like before I got into gym thinking like I need some damn friends I really need I need to find some friends some people that are like my people you know not people that I've just been bunched with because I went to school with or whatever you know people that actually care about me and will ride for me and I remember thinking like okay well I don't think I can play netball and I don't like swimming and like I was kind of going through because I I knew that even if you look in like university the people that are part of those what do they call them like I know exactly what you, know, you mean. I can't think. Societies. societies. Yeah. I can say fraternities, but that's very American, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. like it, you know, it makes you feel like you're part of something. I think a lot of people don't have that as adults. People always say that to me. They're like, how do you, how do I make friends as an adult? And it's hard. It, it is really hard. I spoke about it the other day because I think sometimes when, especially as you grow and evolve, you have friends who you were friends with maybe 10, 12 years ago. But then, and then you're holding on to like happy memories, but then you've really grown apart and it's like, oh my God, I don't know how to make friends as an adult. Like we've made so many friends in the past two years since we moved cities and we moved to a new place and we have our best friends like there. Mm. And as an adult, it seems like a really strange concept. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that you touched on before is you found friends in guys yeah. um, straight away yeah. at the gym. Yeah. And I just wanted to touch on that because I think yeah. a lot of people, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole in a sec of the whole sexualization that people do in tiktok and all that but you made friends with guys yeah so i've always been this is a whole thing i'm working on myself because in some ways i'm like oh damn i really hope i'm not like i've not been like a pick me girl in the past but i genuinely have always been friends with guys more so than girls and i think what's that mean sorry pick me (laughs) kind of like 
being like, oh, I'm not like other girls. Like, <laughs> I, I'm friends with guys because girls are bitchy. But I really did believe that growing up. Like, I actually, and I kind of feel sad for that, for myself for thinking that. I have a lot of fr friends that are girls now. Um, but I kind of grew up with this narrative of like, oh, girls, all girls are bitchy. And so I didn't want to be a part of that. So I lived I so I used to I feel like I was like one of the last like lots of kids where I'd play outdoors my garden would back onto woods so we'd always be like out there playing so I was around like a lot of boys a lot of the time and um so that's always been quite normal to me um and then obviously cycling is like a massively like male dominated like sport I always used to like um do training with them always training with like guys like you know um so yeah I just kind of saw it as like a platonic thing and just chatted with the guys um I can't even remember what your question was <laughs> um that you made friends with guys straight away yeah in the gym well because there weren't many girls there <laughs> um so state the facts. By, yeah. by, by default then <laughs> yeah, obviously it was. um but also I think I'm quite a good judge of character so I could tell like they seem like sound people and mm. then um yeah, I think sometimes it becomes a weird space because of like these echo chambers online where we obviously went for that period of where it's like some women were recording guys and then it like created oh, massive yeah. separation. But then you also got like, not everyone, but there's this, this like you, you spoke about, you thought all girls are bitchy, like all guys are rapists. Like people mm -hmm. get this perception because of things and media articles and it creates a moral panic where everyone judges everyone with the same brush. So it creates like a space of like, well, guys won't approach girls anymore because they're scared, they're scared of being caught on camera and girls won't approach guys because they think everyone's going to be a sex pest. So it yeah, creates this weird I, space where people just don't communicate. And if people actually take a step back, the world, the gym, spaces which we operate in are actually a lot more good than bad. It's just that we hear about this real small percentile of things which mm -hmm. people and news love picking up on because they know it's clickbait. Yeah, I, I'm so mad at those girls and that whole little genre of like you know just like clickbaity like trying to you know I, I feel like a lot of that stuff seems fly on the wall but it's actually set up and I just think it's done so much damage like to the community uh, and I know a lot of guys are like oh my god I'd never walk up to a girl and talk to her because I don't want them to get the wrong idea a lot of my friends are like that so yeah it's it's very unfortunate um and yeah, I think that there is a whole thing with Jim <clears throat> about people being like, oh, you know, you can't talk to a girl, like da 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 da. You just gotta be, you know, somewhat savvy with it and just like be able to read the situation well enough, you know. Are you being a pest yeah. or are you just making some like friendly conversation, you know? Because most guys do just wanna help you in the gym. That is a fact. Most mm -hmm. guys just wanna help you, they're not meaning anything by it if someone is being inappropriate, the difference is massive. Like mm -hmm. if someone just glances at I probably glance accidentally, like, or, or you're in a trance and you might be in a trance and you're staring at, like, it, it just happens. It's one of those things that happen. You're sat at a coffee shop and you're in a trance and you're staring at people. But those particular girls on TikTok who were doing it for likes is is awful and mm -hmm. I hated seeing it because I was like he's literally glancing your direction and you're you're filming him so technically you're filming so you're in the wrong yeah and he's I, just doing his thing yeah so technically you've done it for engagement and yeah. the videos were blowing up I that's also something that like I find a little bit t not touchy but I feel like I really have to you know my my content looks and it is none of my stuff is f staged it's all fly on the wall however most of the time the people know that they're already being filming uh, filmed because they're probably with me or something or um you know there's not a single person I will ever post now maybe at the begin beginning I did and I don't do it now like I do not post anyone without permission because I just think it's wrong like people are there especially like you know say I mean I don't train at peak times but say you were there someone's just finished like a day of work and then they've got like you know, someone posting that, filming them, not only filming them, then posting them on social media and it gets loads of likes and loads of people, then loads of people tagging them, yeah. you know? And it's like, although mine looks like it's um, really, it will be a stranger, but then afterwards we've had a dialogue and I've got their consent and that sort of thing. And I just think like, God, it's not all about like likes and, you know, it, it's 
these uh, this is someone's safe space and like you need to keep it that way so I just think like being respectful I wish people were a little bit more respectful now that filming in the gym is so common mm. but even um, even good can come from bad like that because even though you've caught someone by accident what's that phrase that um <coughs> Casey uses ask for oh permission. yeah because then you're then going up to them speaking afterwards and I've met a couple of new friends who have been in the background of the video and now we're friends because I've had to go and speak to them afterwards mm. um, and at the same time on your point I think we'd be stupid to pretend that people aren't attracted to each other like the first time I, th I saw you in the gym I was like yeah she's smoking and now we're married so let's not pretend that people so, don't find yeah we met at a people, fitness that's thing. what I mean though but people like men and women are going to be attracted to each other as well so let's not like demonise people for like a glance of someone looking over and this bring, brings on to the topic that I was that, also giving you the eye back that's what I mean. That's it. Well, we, we've I mean? had this, we've had this conversation. Happening. We've had this conversation before because I think there's there's something like a policy or something that was trying to be brought in by a governor or, or some member of parliament about was it city car not men not being able to speak to women in the gym. That was the, the premise. Yeah, that was the headline. Like, uh, what is your views on like people meeting people in gyms? Yeah, because I, I I feel quite strongly as well about this whole um you know women need women only gyms I I really don't feel like that's the answer I mean if you want to do that go off right but I feel like men and women should be able to coexist in the same space and you know champion each other and men should be allies for women and I don't see that creating a divide you know is going to help that this episode is how do you know what if you don't like listening to noise mute this episode is kindly sponsored by My Protein as we are sat in the brand new My Protein kitchen. And if you're in Manchester, you need to check it out. It's unbelievable. Yeah. This is the new branded way that we have in front of us, the Impact Way. I am what is commonly referred to as a basic bitch, which basically just means <laughs> I like the bitch. fundamentals, I like a vanilla whey protein because it can add it yeah. to pretty much anything oats, yogurts. Lucy, and it, it goes down very smoothly. One of, also, a new favorite is... But also, I'm taking 20 of these to base camp with me because they are that delicious. Um, not everyone's watching, so what are you talking about? Uh, sorry, the crispy laid toasted marshmallow bar. 16 grams of protein, really delicious, really tasty, really easy to have as a snack. And we have a discount code for you. Well, lastly, I was going to say... Sorry. If you have not tried the innovative product, which is clear way, yeah. you don't like milkshakes... You think they taste disgusting or they don't agree with your stomach, then Clear Whey is literally like a juice in a shaker, which you can easily get over 20 grams of protein in with every single serving. And they also have it in vegan, just for our vegan listeners. But we do have a discount code for my protein and it is not so fit. So make sure you, was that right, Cal? Not so fit? That's the one. Make sure you shop the discount. The discount will be up to 40% across my protein. It is always amazing. So head there and back to the episode. Like the women's gyms one's interesting because I, I we've had this discussion before and I think that like, I think there is a space for them because it might cater to like a certain individual. But then at the end of the day, does that segregation mean that you're never going to be able to go into a, a gym which is um, unisex? Mixed, Especially yeah. like if you've got to travel or you've got to go to a different space, well, you're not going to go to the gym because mm. you've never been in that situation. So, um, but back to my question, yeah, do you think gyms can be, should be a place that people can meet. In not, in I a, mean... Not as in, like, a space for a guy and a girl to meet. Yeah, I mean, that would be ideal, wouldn't it? If you're, like, you know, if if two people are really passionate, I mean, it'd be amazing to find someone that is, like, shares the same passion as you. I think you just got to be, just got to be smart about it and not overstep the line and <clears throat> respect people's boundaries, you know? If someone, it's, like, just common like decency and just like simple stuff if someone isn't really conversing with you like don't push it clearly she's not interested or vice versa clearly he's not interested or um you know you'll be able to tell it's kind of like I don't know I'm trying to think of what it would be similar to like a, a guy like and a, a girl on a beach or something in a bar you know like yeah. it's yeah and it is there is a massive difference like I've had it once before where someone took a picture of me and the flash went off and I went over and I was like, excuse me, you've just taken a picture of me squatting. I saw a reflection in the mirror. And I was quite bold at this point because I didn't really care. So that is crossing a line. That's super inappropriate. You report people like that. But if you're conversating and you're looking at someone, they're looking at you and it's like you're smiling, 
that's that's nice. That's like a nice communication to have. Mm-hmm. If someone's coming over mid set, pestering you, talking mid leg press, and you're like not respond. No, there is a boundary in it. Yeah, and I and I just it, think it's like, just been having a bit of common sense. Yeah, and I've seen stuff. I mean, I definitely would say like if you are interested in someone just just for the love of god do not comment on how she looks i just i've seen videos like that i just think just just don't yeah. you know say you've got beautiful eyes yeah. <laughs> or something like that but um yeah i just think no no i, th- I think people also like a less good at reading social situations because we spend so much time online everyone works from oh, home so- without covid like people are- I just think people's social skills and their ability to read social situations is maybe not as good as it once was. And that, yeah. doesn't, that definitely doesn't help. But I definitely want to stress that, like, although we're talking about this, this is really a small proportion oh, yeah, a of the experience to anyone listening. Like, it, it is such a positive, like, uplifting, like, empowering space to be in. And although, you know it seems that that happens more frequently than not like on social media. That's just because that's what gets clicks and views and stuff like that. And it's not representative of the, the space. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said before about the world being more good than bad, but we often hear about all the shit stuff because we're surrounded by it. But if, if someone's tossed me in because we train at home sometimes, if I could train in a gym with like no one ever in it, I think that's a lot of people dream to have the big own gym you would get bored of it pretty quick. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's even that yeah. thing of like sometimes when you go in, I think the theory is called social facilitation. It's where people perform better in front of other people because you have that stress. Like if I'm in the gym sometime, like fucking Johnny and Steve are over there looking at me to do this deadlift, the best, the best rip it up. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? You have that little mm-hmm. bit of pressure, that little bit of mindset mm-hmm. at the back. Of, that's good for people sometimes to have that performance. And like even for women who train with men, because men are often born bigger, we're, we're bigger due to yeah. physiological reasons. I think definitely you do because you've always been surrounded by me or like we've trained with guys. It pushes yeah. you to oh, your performance 100%. up as well. I really miss that. because obviously I'm from London and like a lot of my audience know like my boy is back home from my gym. I love them. Um, and I make such an effort. I will go out of my way whenever I'm back in London to train with them because yeah, it is. There's some things that are just are facts, you know. Like men are just anatomically stronger. Yeah, there's got no more testosterone. like yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's like training with them pushes me harder than I would be if I was training alone or perhaps with like other girls or anything like that. So yeah, was well, that Harvard study which said that even in an office space, those who are sat next to someone who's like a higher performer than them will drive their p- performance up by 30%. I think it's the exact same thing if you're in the gym. If you're, if you're Like if I train with a guy who's stronger than me, I, it makes me push more because I'm trying to, I'm trying to level up, not look yeah. down. And I remember like when I used to race as well, it's easier to chase someone and like to. overtake and at the last second than it is to, to stay f- ahead, you know, stay front, so... When you got into the gym, because I know you mentioned with your brother on Christmas Day, yeah. you filmed yourself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was that the first time you'd ever got your camera out in a gym space? I think no. No, it's not. Because I had been... The only experience I had with... Because I like to say that my fin- my lifting journey, um, this era, started in like November 21. However, I had been in the gym space before. I'd literally only been when like, a partner at the time would have been like, come on, like, go. And I'm like, fine. Um, But I really didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't familiar with, like, any of the machinery or anything. And I think the most that I had probably used my phone was... Actually, I can remember now. So the most I'd used my phone was I would go into a studio and I'd, like, stand with my my phone, like, there, just below, you know, my my head and I just take a photo, really sly photo um, and it's so funny because you can look back at the photos and you can see like the body language is so like yeah. lack of confidence yeah. and then there's like a couple of other videos there's one other video where and it would always be someone taking it taking it for me sometimes somehow there's like less embarrassment or like shame yeah. by having someone else take it um and I heard it the other day because I was, I was trying to find a clip for something I was editing and it was like me and I'm on a smith machine doing like lunges and I'm I go yeah, but tell me if I'm doing it wrong because otherwise it's going to look embarrassing if I'm doing it. You know, and it's like, oh, yeah. that really, like, you know, reiterates what we're talking about. So, but yeah, I mean, I really hadn't ever... And when I actually started filming myself, I was filming it because I was alone and I was like, oh, 
I know people film themselves to check their form because I am just inherently a perfectionist and it has to be perfect. So I would like film myself. Um, it was never really for any other reason or it's, purpose than that. It's always good to fuck up in those situations though when nobody's watching. I think a lot of people when they first start doing something, even I was when I first started shooting videos, I was scared to do it. But that's the best time for tapping because your view account is zero. So you might as well fuck up in front of no people and rather than be shit when there's thousands of people watching. Yeah. And it's it's cool because you get to watch your with it doesn't have to be filming content, it could be with anything. It could be it's just cool watching back on your progress or your journey of of what that is and where it's gone from and where it's it's also going to. And I think was it the Homozy quote where he talks about if you're not confident doing something, then it's about building an undeniable stack of evidence. Yeah. Until you create the person that you want to be, yeah, because, rather than just like because a lot so of people, yeah, yeah, a lot of people are like I'll, I'll just fake it till I make it, and that's a very thin, dangerous premise to operate on because you're always susceptible to imposter syndrome. So I think just continuing to do the thing over and over and over again is really good. And again, referencing another quote, I remember said it: the magic is in the work that you're avoiding. I think that's like yeah. it resonates with me so much because I know after even I shot a video actually on Saturday with uh, Kieran. It was a video where I was going up and like speaking to people and chatting to people. I really didn't want to do it because it was uncomfortable, but it was probably one of the best videos I've done, and I grew the most because it was doing something that I'd usually avoid doing. And there's always usually a lot of growth on the edge of something which feels uncomfortable to you. Yeah, like wherever there's kind of resistance is really where you actually need to be like putting the spotlight on. Growth, yeah. I know. I that whole uh, imposter syndrome is something I really struggle with. I'm really trying to like navigate that. Is that a recent thing since your yeah, socials um, have grown, or have you had it pre social always, media? Perhaps it's always been there. However, I do feel like since the past few months, since like growing to just like where I'm at now, it's something that yeah, I do really yeah struggle with so that's something i should definitely take note of because it's like yeah you know people do always talk about like oh fake it till you make it but um yeah yeah the things that help help me with that are as when i'm feeling imposter syndrome is why yeah, would it, we, we get it yeah, badly, why just, why would i not okay, be feeling yeah. this way because i've never been here before so i'm obviously going to feel that way until i've got the evidence to suggest otherwise so we yeah. just go and try it. and then the other thing i always think is and i always tell this about anything that even I'm successful at or look at other people everybody's just fucking winging it nobody actually knows truly nobody knows any, like we pretend like we do or we, we've got this theory for this or this theory for this but everyone's still winging it to, to some degree and the only difference between me or you and the people that we look up to is that they just fucked up and got things wrong more times than you have at this present time mm, yeah and I, I think then what p- puts pressure on people is just the concept of time so I think time's so weird. It stresses out yeah. so much. You feel I should be at this point compared to this person or, or this this point. And again, we I think we, we we underestimate yeah. like what we can do in a week versus a day or an hour. And we put so much pressure or so much so much stuff on our own plate that we become stressed out and we procrastinate and don't do do anything. So I think that's just a, a really difficult concept to go over is, is time because. If everyone just died now, wouldn't be very good, but if everyone, if everyone just died now, you wouldn't feel you were behind of anything or any pressure or anything because you've got nothing to compare that to. Yeah. So we create that pressure ourselves via time. I think someone who speaks a lot about this is Mo Gaudet. Yeah, he does. Um, and time's like one of the, just the biggest stresses ever. I remember the, the video that I put the other day, I didn't record myself on purpose for this reason, but I was sitting in the ice bath and I was just laughing on my own outside. I was laughing yeah, the at the- Yeah, cameras were picking, I was like, I was just he, I was like, like why are you laughing at I was laughing at how ridiculous my day before had been stressing out about such small things about time I should have done this shit. and like it didn't matter at all like if I hadn't done anything it wouldn't have mattered because I'm in control of like what happens next I think when we allow other people's time to dictate where we're at that's what creates the pressure of it it's so strange mm. I definitely feel myself slipping up I always kind of come back to like comparison as the thief of joy mm. and I think especially with like the whole social media game it's like whenever I'm having wobbly moments I I just kind of look and I think it's because you're comparing yourself you're not focusing on you you're not focusing on you know you should have like total blinkers on your journey it's different for everyone um but yeah the the whole thing I think the thing that I do find helps me with imposter syndrome when I have it so I just have to keep like doing it is just that like I truly believe that you you wouldn't get the opportunities that aren't meant for you. Like, mm-hmm. if, it, if oh, you, like you've got that. something on your plate, then it's 
it's for you. Mm -hmm. That's what you wouldn't have been asked otherwise, or you wouldn't have that opportunity made available for you. But yeah, I think. And that's the thing about social media. You can't help but compare. Mm. We all do it and we work on social media. I think a lot of people think like, who follow us or, oh, they must not compare. Oh my God, I get in holes of comparisons Mm. that I literally feel like addicted to scrolling. Yeah, And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And I had therapy last week and my therapist was like, I think you need a hobby. Because I was saying this, because I was like, well, my hobby is fitness. She's like, that's your job Job. as well. Yeah, I was like, okay. And she lists all these things. I was like, I did get given like a Lego set, like a Harry Potter Lego set for a, a wedding present. And she was like, well, why, why haven't you started it out? And I had no reason. Yeah. I was like, well, it's going to get me off my phone. It's going to, because sometimes you're so glued in, you can be like, well, I'm looking at other people because I can see for how it can help my content or I can get inspiration from other people. But it's just a little lie to yourself that you're actually doing it because you want to compare to other people. Mm. So I recently started Lego and the phone does not come in the room because it's important to be, when you work on social media, it is very hard. I think to, and everyone's like, oh, you're so lucky you're in this. And I'm like, it's great. It's amazing. But I do think it can be quite a hard space to navigate because it is, it is still so new. Yeah. I think it's just, and especially like, I, like I'm so new to it. So I feel like I'm really like, I'm just learning a lot and kind of like really having to like, just kind of continue to like overcome like mind challenges that I feel like it brings like I feel the whole thing is very complex with having your job be you and the brand you're the brand you know you everyone says like oh don't look at the numbers and stuff like that and it's like you know I try not to the best I can because I don't want that to impact me but then at the same time when you have like partnerships and deals and like you know your income relies on that then it's like it's just really hard and it's it's just weird the whole thing is very very strange and I think just it's really teaching me to just be super resilient and I mean I'm definitely not there yet but like the whole yeah the whole space is just interesting and I think I do definitely need to if I do want this to be like a long-term thing I just think I need to just really like focus on like what you're talking about also i love that you got a lego set as a wedding mm. present yeah so iconic yeah one of my but, friends works at lego and she knows i love harry uh, potter oh. so it's like the whole house the car i've not got very oh, far yet have i love that mm-hmm. but yeah just like even you know i would think to myself like because i i really believe in therapy i have therapy like every week and have done honestly for like probably like two years now god i think that's great though i um, think it's great if you can you know it's, it is expensive mm-hmm. but if you can then i absolutely would like do that but yeah it's kind of like you know we reflect together in our sessions and i'm like i don't actually have like any self-care like practices or you know i i i really find journaling helpful but do i do it no <laughs> you know and like you know when you're talking about the magic is oh, the work you're avoiding yeah but like you know even if i'm talking about like myself and like my mentor it's like why am i not doing that because all i talk about is like oh, yeah journaling really helps me but like i'm not doing it mm. and so yeah i just think yeah there's a term for that as well as like the advice that you're giving and trying to take it yourself it's 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 quite difficult to do sometimes mm. um but I think I think um, it's not always great advice to go to someone or oh, yeah, just ignore the numbers or don't do that. Like we spoke about this before, in terms of it's like saying to someone just be yourself or just act mm. confident. It's it's a real like throwaway term because you can't stop comparing. It's 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 evolution. It's nature for us to look around in society and go where do we fit in? Like how do we compare? Mm. But it's always something that's going to be done. It's just mm-hmm. can we change the, the reason why we're comparing or the metric that we're using to compare? Like. I could look at you and go, well, you're a way better runner than me. So, but so what's the point in me comparing? Because I'm always going to feel worse off. But I can look at things that maybe fall into my strong point or that I enjoy and that I'm good at other things for me that bring value. And when you have gratitude for that, I think that's definitely um, you say a, hell of a lot, hell of a lot easier. And again, just being self-aware. So mm-hmm. when those voices creep up in your head that are telling you you're an imposter or you're not good enough at something, I think just starting to pick up on those is really important because the voice that you will hear the most in your whole life will be your own. So you need to make sure that that voice lifts you up and not puts you down. Yeah. Time oh, stamp that. that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was a really good one. That was good. And yeah, I think. So. With... Sure you being so you're coming up to two years online well no actually in fact i'm coming up 
Oh my God, like me and maths. Um, so I started in like March. I started like properly doing content in like March 22. Oh, wow. I remember when you did it because I remember sending in one of your clips to Cal saying this is great. It was years yeah, ago. Yeah, you did. <laughs> when you first started. Yeah, this is was great. Because yeah. um, obviously your following grew really quickly. Yeah. And with that sometimes comes the negative comments on social media or hate comments, nasty comments and things like that. Have you experienced those sort of things with your content? Because I don't know if you, I don't know if you would. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely like really fortunate that I do have, um, for the most part, really positive comments. Um, I feel that when it goes to, <clears throat> when it goes to the meme accounts is when I'm like, do not even look at that. Mm. I believe ignorance is bliss. Um, I don't want to know. Uh, there's, do you know that thing about like the negativity bias that yeah, your yeah. brains have, our brains have? So it's like, I don't, you, and that's like where you will see 99 positive comments, one negative, but you know, we're hardwired to really focus in on that thing. And it's like, even, you know, like when you could probably, I'm sure all of us, if someone said, oh, what were you teased about at school? Like that, that gets in deep. Yeah. So I just don't, I don't, I don't like to take it in. Um, however, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I have heard, yeah, like just ridiculous things. But I feel like I, a lot of that is just kind of understanding that that person is hurting. Yeah. To put that online about someone else, a lot of the time they don't understand. Um, I mean, I'm fine with it. Um, well, I'm not fine with it. But like, I, I tolerate it because it's my job. But I just care when it's like my family, mm. you know, that aren't... Um, used to it or like friends of mine they'll see a post and they'll say oh all these people or they'll feel, feel the need to de- like um defend me and I'm like do not <laughs> <Yeah>. even <laughs> don't look engage. don't look do not do it do yeah. not look and I you know I, I kind of shout at them or like if anyone new comes into my life I'm like D- just don't read comments mm-hmm. I don't read the comments I will read my comments you know like when I first post or something but I just think I think like it got, I was gonna say this earlier like a thing that I've like spun out about since starting social media is, you know, when people say to you, Sid, we love you because you're you. And when brands tell you, we love you because you're you, just do what you're doing. And on those like weaker, more vulnerable moments, you're like, but what do I do? Yeah. Who am I? Like, what am I? And you know, all these existential things, but it's just, it's just a weird world na- that I'm navigating. And I feel like I kind of fell into it because I didn't, it was never really my intention to be an influencer. I still kind of cringe when I hear that word. And um, yeah, very, it, it kind of came very like naturally. So I think it's just kind of, I feel it's a necessary evil, you know, all of this yeah. that comes with it. I, I have the most amazing life. Like I already feel like sometimes I'm, I'm just like sat here and I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I'm already living my dream life. You know, mm. like what, I love that. you know, like what else could I want? You know, I'm, I'm a pretty simple girl. Like, um, so yeah, I just think. Yeah. I think unfortunately we'll never get rid of those kind of things. Even like with your stuff being super positive, there's always going to be people who will have something to say. Um, and I, Again, I'm going to steal my old coach Jamie's quote. I was going to say, I could, it, I could like, tell you the quote you're about to say. I think, I think this is fit, fitting. Ben's a quote book. I think this is. I, I'm learning. Yeah, I think, I think this is fitting to your content just because it is so positive, and it's like even if there was a, an old woman in a burning building, whether you chose to rescue her or not, there's always going to be someone who thinks you're a dickhead. It's like it doesn't matter what decision you make. And I, I was reflecting on this just as you were speaking about. I was watching the David Beckham documentary yesterday. Oh yeah, and I the love fact that. that like he's a young guy who's like 22, 23 he's made like a little mistake in a game and the whole nation was on his back like calling for his head they oh, were hanging I mean, bodies of him and like that. that's what I mean so even back then before like social media was a thing in the, in the national media people that's who nice. were just are so fickle and I think a lot of the time it's because you're um, at Sig Gross and they don't think there's an actual person behind those sort of things so people can't like personify or humanise that thing so it's easy for them just to throw shit at you because if you're walking down the street no one would say so anything to you no. and, and the, the, often the reason because of that is because there's going to be repercussions of saying to someone someone in the seat whether that be physical or um verbal there's going to be repercussions but online there's no repercussions yeah that's actually something i really like try to distinguish with my friends and family that you know aren't from this world and like don't really get it is like and anyone new that i like have in my life like 
anyone I meet or like I remember when I was like dating and stuff like I wouldn't tell people about my job not because I was like ashamed of it or anything like that but it's just because like I try to lean into being as authentically myself and showing as much as myself as I feel is like well-rounded but I feel like at the same time like there is so much more to me and my my parents like laugh at me whenever I say I'm not talking about sick grows I'm talking about Sydney from like you know my area like you know what I mean so it's like I think there is yeah there is more to us than like your average person just scrolling sees in that split second you know and when decides you, to comment on when you said that then about Sid not Sid grows my dad for his wedding speech he said the exact same thing he was like you all know Lucy Davis fit but I'm going to take you back to my daughter Lucy and I w- didn't hear and that was like a really oh. I got really upset because I was like it's actually so true because there's a lot less people who know Lucy yeah. rather than the online version which is quite a strange thing to navigate when he said that in the wedding speech, I was just staring at my sister like, oh my God, oh No, my God. I honestly feel emotional because that hits because like, I yeah. feel like, you know, there's, there's, there is so much more to me that I haven't, I've kind of like shut it off as well, you know, like no one really knows this, but like my background is fashion and like I have a, I'm a very creative person, went to like art school and like even just stuff like, you know, there's so many facets, like parts of my myself that I've like shut off just because I'm, I'm in my career, I'm like, you know, but I think just kind of understand that, yeah, there is a human behind it and um, there's so much more to us than, um, yeah, that one hate comment we'll we'll think about, you know. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I think with that, it's like a balancing act as well because even the, the super positive can sometimes be not great for you. And what I mean by that is, I see it a lot online, but I can even take example from like real world evidence so you'll see some people online and let's say for example one style of post goes off we'll use um like what is it called eating disorder stuff or whatever it may be where someone's post has gone off because they're really promoting like some kind of content which maybe doesn't even fit too much with their values Mm -hmm. and they feel like they now need to show up as this different person because they're getting social validation from thousands of people and if they post anything else they don't get as much of it this could be be with Mm -hmm. people who post a lot of their bodies being naked and they get loads of validation for it so they're now almost unknowingly watching themselves evolve into a different version of themselves because this social validation is driving in that direction for me I remember like loads of people gave me a lot of validation and like yeah like you're the man like when I was getting pissed a lot I was like okay I need to do more of this because everyone's loving it when I'm getting bladded so I became that guy who was just a bit of a dick and getting pissed all the time because other people were giving me validation for that although it wasn't the person that I wanted to be mm. so sometimes it's difficult it, not on social media in real life for people listening like the person that you're showing up as I think you've got to be careful as because if you continue to receive validation for that person you'll evolve into it and I think it's people will show different parts of the character in different spaces like some people mm-hmm. go show up in the office are going to show a different person to mm-hmm. who's at home so I think it's an interesting concept of just that balance of between the negative and the positive and what you take on yeah. board and I think also that kind of like leads on to like just being really aware of like who your circle is and who you choose to surround yourself with I know they say like you're like you're made up of the x amount of people yeah, that you're around people, yeah. yeah and i think it is so true and i think like just you know take note like are those people like living the kind of life or encouraging the kind of like behaviors and habits like i am i allowed to say this i smoked weed like you, so yeah, yeah. you, I don't know. you, you, did, like, you did a post on it i think yeah my dad, I saw... my dad said I wouldn't have put that on Instagram. I said, I don't <laughs> no, I, I enjoyed that post. Though. It was yeah. really good. Like I, I really, sh- I've had a lot of struggles like f- with like kind of myself, my boundaries, my kind of, I guess everyone probably experiences this growing up, but like, yeah, I, I smoked like daily weed for like five years and um, it kind of got to a point where I was like, I'm not, like I'm not surrounding myself with the people that like are encouraging positive behaviors you know like when I had a sort of an inkling of like I think I'm really I think I want to stop I really want to stop like I don't don't think this is healthy for me I don't think this is like making me you know show up as the person I want to be um but yeah like just making sure the people around you are kind of encouraging that and like 
lo and behold, if you do kind of just take note, become aware, mm-hmm. kind of inc- let people into your life that are really like, you know, positive role models, then you'll quickly watch everything switch up. And lo and behold, it did. So, And that's like a really important thing as well, because it can, when you're in like a circle of like people who you're no longer in that mindset, you you almost think you're really going to offend them by moving away. But when it slowly just drifts apart, it might be the best thing that's like ever happened to you. In your case, it absolutely is the best mm-hmm. thing that's ever happened. Yeah. And it's just getting over that thing. Like, oh my God, what are people going to think about me? And that's where it's like, okay, I need to be more self-aware and maybe need to be a little bit selfish and just for once put myself first to get out of whatever situation that is. And obviously yours has had the most positive outcome yeah. that it could have had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thanks for also sharing that. I think that's really important. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I I feel like, yeah. No, no Authentically one really, you. Authentically me. Authentically no, you. No, but like no one really, I don't feel like people don't really talk about the whole smoking thing. And like I do put it up, you know, occasionally when, when it does come up in conversation um, because I really struggled with it. And also like just, you know, I used it um as a way to kind of de-stress and like finding new ways to do that and finding new you know all all I do with my friends would be smoke and it's like when you realize like oh all we're doing is this yeah and that's how we don't you're actually linked. know how to like do anything else you know um so yeah that's been that's been a whole journey in itself but mm-hmm. I suppose then it's trying to reflect on what's a net positive that's having overall isn't it and like what what could you possibly re- replace that habit with which makes you feel less stressed and again for a lot of people that's that's the gym. There's a lot yeah. more positive things that can come out of that. I mean, I was never a big. Dopamine. I was never a big weed smoker just because I tried it once, just went white, and was yeah, sick everywhere. I, I, I much prefer the lion me on the that weekend. Was that was me. That, that was my. Tried what? Oh, cocaine. Oh, that was. <laughs> I thought you said that like was a my. Lion. Um, I was like, that, that was my poison lion. of choice. Yeah. And that was what I got hooked into for a while. Do you remember my first weed experience? Uh, I do because you like literally imagine. This wasn't even. This Lucy was, tried it this once was where, where, a couple of years ago. And, Me, and, and do you know like sometimes how you pick the sheet up off a bed and you go like yeah so imagine Sarah, that but we had I, this I had like I don't know what you call it I had like one sip of it yeah. like, <laughs> no, sweet, sweet. Sweet. I had like I had, like, I had, I had a singular a singular drag <laughs> and I was like it's not for me I don't like it but obviously you must have like inhaled the whole yeah. thing she had a sip of weed and she had a toke of vodka didn't you I <laughs> no. anyway anyway yeah. yeah and then I was like it's not I don't but I was like I got the munchies. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you know, like you have a bed sheet and you sometimes go, I don't need to fluff it off. There's this cake the about cake was like this. this big and Lucy with the ice and basically did that like a bed sheet and just took the whole thing I off. Like this. <laughs> then they all came into the kitchen and were like, there's Lucy. And that was my one experience. Yeah. And it just didn't, I just one didn't done. understand it, did one I? And yeah. done. Didn't know how to sip it, did I? I think like, because everyone says, everyone who's like functioning, because I, I smoked it all through like my whole degree and I'm just like, damn like everyone says you know the people that are able to function like they're like oh yeah you know I can do like everything on it and whatever but I just I really just don't I just don't think that having been in it I'm just like mm. I really don't think there's any coincidence that I stopped smoking weed and then everything flipped you know and like suddenly I'm like so much more productive and you know just able to like actually do things and I'm more sociable and um yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it numbs situations? Though? Like, what what is the what's the draw to? Because I, I remember hearing uh, who was the guy on the Stephen podcast, Seth, with Rogen. Seth, Seth Rogen, just raving about it that like he does it every day and it helps him with, like creativity and other stuff. And he's like, it doesn't affect me. I was th- sitting there thinking, uh, like, smoking to that degree must have some negative impacts. But I know a lot of people who. I mean, I was in the police many years ago, and there's a guy who. Oh, by the way, on our police intake, did a presentation on legalizing weed, which is just like, you don't do did that. Did he get taken into the police? Yeah, he, we, we were already in the police. So he chose to present that? On legalizing weed, because he smokes all the time. I was like, I yeah. wouldn't present that. But um, yeah, what, yeah, back to the question, do you th- what do you think it does for people? Did it numb situations for you? Like, Well, certainly for me, um, I have a, like, I really struggle with, like, attention, inattentiveness, and like overthinking and just like this like really overactive hyperactive mind and I feel like it it was definitely a way to like switch off uh and I do in ways miss it for that sense of just being able to just like take something 
and then you're you're good right and it causes like a physiological like change whereas now it's like if I do want to de-stress or whatever I have to like be a lot more like Mm. proactive with it and you know assertive so I would probably say yeah it's just you know life is hard for a lot of people it probably just gives them everyone has a vice so it's like a nice vice to just kind of zone out for a bit I always think there's an exchange whenever you're getting like that immediate feedback or that that me like immediate gratification would you call it I don't know the same as with like sometimes you have to make the hard decision now for like the better tomorrow same like the same when it comes to nutrition and food sometimes like you can't always go out and just have the foods that you want to sometimes you need to have the foods that you need not what you want because then you get paid twice the day after by like feeling better um and I think that's often the case with that it's like yeah I get the immediate hit and the immediate benefits from it but what are the consequences to the actions that I'm taking. I think it's always things like that when it's, even when it comes to medication or there's a pill for everything, yeah. there's the easy way out. I don't think that's, that ever leads to like a good end point. I think there's got to be better systems put in place yeah. for you to be able to like survive and thrive in those situations. And I get for a lot of people, like, I mean, there's even circumstances where we'd use a medical term as well. And I understand that's obviously not what we're referring to. But um, yeah, I think if you can, you can kind of have that output of definitely trying to focus on what the tomorrow you would want you to do. It's a good like space to be in. Mm, I think that's why like, cause I quit, I was trying, cause it would be like every time I'd smoke. Yeah. That was helpful in the here and now. And yeah, that was like, get, like gratification in that, in that moment. But then it would be like every time I'd smoke, I'd feel like a crippling guilt of like, I told myself I was going to stop and I can't and I don't know how to and you know feeling like powerless or feeling like it's got this like hold over you and then I started gym kind of at a similar sort of time and in ways I was also using the gym as a means to kind of distract myself or to like fill this time that I would have had smoking um and I think the going like exercising regularly it kind of really like lays that foundation of just kind of working for something yeah. and I feel like that's why so many people that do have a really regular sort of routine fitness routine in their life they are just like crushing it in so many other ways because it just teaches you so I feel like it taught me so much so when I kind of look at everything on the table I'm like oh no what it makes sense that you know there's nothing particularly special about like my journey it's just that it all kind of came together really nicely and everything was like really complimentary and helped me and that's the sorry that's the beauty of exercise is your your hormones do change you're going to have more serotonin you're going to have dopamine you're actually going to feel better and even though not every session is great and you don't always feel amazing most of the time there's not going to be a session that you regret doing no and then yeah the long-term goals you could have a goal of doing a powerlifting competition or running your first 5k or whatever it is and having those set goals just gives you that little bit more routine accountability you're doing it for yourself you're not doing it for anyone else and it it overall just makes you feel so much better Mm, yeah and I think then also kind of touching on like the gym community like imagine that within yourself times like a whole room full of people it's like that's why it's just a really Mm. good space to be in if you are trying to work on yourself because they're good people they're really good people to be around that will encourage really things that you probably couldn't even imagine you could do you know Mm. I'm just trying to think like what we're talking about then how many things like really in life that you get that immediate gratification of or things that are given to you easily really like vanquish any real feeling of accomplishment the lottery being like the biggest one people get given money like what's the stat like 90% of those people go bankrupt I think that whenever you're just given something that you realistically need to put some groundwork in for you don't value it mm. I think it's the same like the guy who sets out to earn a million pound he earns a million pound the, the day that he crosses over the 999,000 mark to the next day and a million it doesn't nothing there's not like a, a party of people come running through your house going woo you're a millionaire it's the same it's the next day so mm. I remember feeling the same thing where I was like, I need to get this lean to really feel good. I got this lean. I was like, yeah. it just feels the same as yesterday when I was like a bit leaner. And it's difficult to tell people that because it's sometimes until you experience it, 
or you go through that trial and error yourself, you can't value it. It's the same as me going, Lucy, has a, the, the exact route that you need to walk up Everest or whatever you're doing next month, the, the exact steps you should take. But you need to go and just experience it yourself to really understand what that's about. And a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Um, one of the things that I... I mean, everything you said is going to help so many people. I don't think you realise how authentic you actually are and the way you communicate it, it's really wonderful but mm -hmm. one thing I wanted to ask is if you could give because you've been there and you've experienced it if you could just give the girl listening who needs the support in terms of how can I go to the gym if I am intimidated if I've got gym anxiety like how how do I do that Sid like how do I get in even if it's just like one little thing that you experience and it literally helped you so much and you even bring yourself back to sometimes mm. do you have that one thing that could help someone who's listening yeah I mean I've said it before but I know I know when I said it that it like really hit with a lot of people but just kind of understanding that we all pay the same membership to be in the gym and no one's like superior based on like experience level or anything you know we're all worthy of being in that space and um like take up the damn space you know you you have a right to be there um just because someone's more experienced literally does not mean shit um but yeah I just like understanding that um you are more than capable of doing whatever you want to do but of getting into the gym I know that can feel like the hardest part but um just kind of just do it and understand that like the growth comes outside of the comfort zone so um take it bit by bit I'm I just say to people don't feel like you need to go in having never set foot in a gym and then be like a month amongst all the guys doing some bicep curls <laughs> right at the front like take it if it literally means going in and leaving then that's good enough if it means going in going on the cardio machines you know I know we'd like demonize them a lot but we kind of joke about it but like you know if that means just like kind of using one machine then then good enough or if that means using a class I found classes really helpful because I was literally petrified to go up like stairs to where you know all the the men would train in the weight free weight section so it just kind of got me in that space and um if that means like just talking to one girl say complimenting her and saying you know if you if you're desperate to, a lot of people say to me oh I want to make a friend but I'm so scared don't know how to it's like well just ask one challenge yourself ask one person how many sets do you have left or left or something like that um but yeah just kind of knowing that you know you, you've got this more than anything I'd say yeah honestly I think because we have a lot of female listeners and I do think because it happens to me it happens to you and still and I think that's very comforting for people to understand. Have you ever experienced gym anxiety? Sorry, I just thought I'm thinking, just um, throwing it. When I've been to like real old school bodybuilding gyms, and that was mainly through the mm. actually meeting wankers. So yeah. there is going to be wankers in some gyms, mm. and that's just something that, that you've got to experience in life. That like They'll be everywhere. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah. wankers everywhere. Um, in every crevice and, of And life. I had a bad experience with some guy, and that kind of put me, like, I was only 16, 17. Um, and yeah, that, that kind of created a bit of anxiety. So I can see how well, a, lot, a lot of people generally, their experiences of the world, will take their, the glasses in which they see everything else. And you were saying about women going up into the space of like being in the men's room and wh whatever like people would view it as. A lot of that's obviously just got to come down to repetition, repetition, repetition. But what do you think mm -hmm. guys can do to make those spaces maybe more welcoming or easier for more women to break into? Um... I don't know that's a hard one uh, because I don't really actually think the guys are doing anything wrong no I agree um, with you there so I'm, I'm just thinking like dropping, dropping I'm just more, I'm just more thinking in terms like guys an listening like is there something that you would like if you were going into a violin, like you would like a guy to do or a guy to say or a guy to be like you, do you know what I mean we often hear about these dicks who are the minorities creating a bad space but generally most of the guys are good guys and want to see women and, men, and just people do well and the more synergy we can have between men and women the better spaces they're going to be perhaps like if you saw someone struggling or something like that just kind of offer a little bit of help mm -hmm. um but i think a lot of it is just kind of more in 
kind of going back to what I said right at the start, I think a lot of it is more in your head yeah. than you realise. And I think just like a few more pointers, like social media is so amazing now because there is just such a wide, there's so there's access to so much more kind of to like look at. Like I, I remember just being like so fearful of even just kind of being in the, the space. Whereas now there's just a creator helping you kind mm -hmm. of guide you along the way with anything you do. Um, so I think that would be really helpful. I was going to say something else. I can't really think what it was. It'll come back to me. But um, yeah, it's gone. Do you know what I find one of the best things to do? And this is like from my perspective, I just smile at everyone. Because oh, yeah, it, it makes truly. me, it makes me laugh. I just feel happier. And it's if fake, I. Fake positivity. Well, not even fake no, no, I'm but, a smiley person. But, but, but if you smile, it's a, it's a start about like if you, even if you feel like shit when you smile, it yeah. makes you actually happier. Like if I've ever gone into a new gym, and I do feel a little bit overwhelmed and it happens occasionally. I always just smile at everybody. I'm yeah, like, I think and I just feel better. I think you're very much the same energy as me because I do the same. And my thing, I know what mine is because my sister laughs at me for saying so. But mine is that I, I don't like not being in control of situations. And when I go into a new gym, I feel out of control, which I think a lot of people will probably, that will resonate with them. Um, and so the way I take control is by just like breaking that, initial barrier and just ask someone anything yeah. like um how many sets you got left or oh um do you know where I can find the barbells like you know what I mean it just means that somehow you've like taken up space mm -hmm. you've kind of asserted yourself in there and you're kind of like you've just made contact with one person you mm -hmm. know what I mean so I find that helps me and whenever I feel gym anxiety I'm just like oh my gosh okay right who can I and I am that yeah. annoying girl that is looking around yeah. for someone like to, to smile at like, where's the toilet yeah so. oh, honestly <laughs> where's the I usually the room. <laughs> where's the water I usually say to people I'm just like oh, do you know where the water is like or like you know when you do have that conversation with someone it's very easy for the you to both go your separate ways but then she'd be like oh yeah so like and you know what I mean it yeah. just I, I feel like it helps you take your power mm -hmm. back from a situation that feels very out of your control yeah out Absolutely. of your control yeah. yeah we are exactly the same on that I'm, I'm, I like control don't I yes <laughs> Cal's like Cal, Cal's not yeah, there Cal everybody answered, Cal answered for, you. for everybody then but no I'm very similar and it, it's quite a hard thing to do but yeah asking smiling when you smile, it's like, oh, do you know what? I'm fine. Yeah. I'm actually fine. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Just take up that space, like take it up physically as well, like wander around the gym. Yeah. You know? Hello. Rather, <laughs> well, rather than just kind of like making yourself small, yeah. you know. Yeah, just get your sports bra out, you know? Just do wear it. the damn shorts. Wear the damn shorts. Everybody. <laughs> I thought you were to me then. No, no. Guys, wear your shorts. Wear your bags. I thought you just want a sports bra. But Sid, you have been such a breath of fresh air. And oh, for everyone listening, where can they find more of you and what you do and everything like that? Um, so at Sid Grows on everything. And if you want to be part of a safe space female community, you can find us at Gym Girls Locker Room. Amazing. And that's pretty much everything. No, honestly, it's incredible. And you're very authentic. Mm -hmm. What you see is what you get. And that's quite hard to find. I Thanks. think in this day and age, you should be really, really proud of everything you've achieved. Thank you. As well. Thanks so much.